Welcome back to Marvel Maniac and MCU After Show. This is Eric Cicada, a.k.a. Mr. Honest, and I am your host. And I'm happy to be here with you today for episode three of Falcon and Winter Soldier. Wow, what an episode. We had some twists and some turns and some stuff I didn't expect to see. Um, I'm wondering how you felt about it. Always happy to hear from you at Marvel Maniac Pod on Twitter, Marvel Maniac Pod at gmail.com. Let us uh, know what you're thinking. Um, always love to hear what you're thinking, and you may uh, be featured on the show. And let's get into the episode right off the bat. The episode's in Power Broker. Um, who do you think that's referring to? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe some really insanely awesome dude who was the main antagonist of the movie Captain America Civil War. Um, he's also a huge comic book villain. Um, in this episode, he's a huge player, and you don't really know what to expect from him from off the bat. And you really never know what turn he's going to take. He's, he's, he's Bar- Baron Zemo. Um, and yeah, I never really know what to think about Baron Zemo, right? Um, I'm scared of Zemo at the, at the beginning of this. I'm, 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 I'm suspicious. I'm cautious. I'm, 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 I'm weary of Zemo. I'm weary of Zemo. I want to do this in a one take. I'm, I'm like really want to be more on. Um, I came on these podcasts. Uh, I love the show so much, I'm, and I'm so in the moment uh, in these episodes. And then I got to keep rewinding them because freaking like much happens uh, in these action scenes. Oh, they're so sick. This end of that Zemo scene at the end. I mean, come on. What was that? That was so sick. Um, <laughs> I'm just sitting there. I'm like, oh, dude was great this is why you know while doing these podcasts i'm gonna have to start watching these things if they if they always release on disney plus like like they're they're gonna be doing black widow i'm gonna have to watch them like that now you know and it's sad that i love watching my movies at midnight like my marvel movies midnight release of course of course but I love doing this and this is fantastic okay um so Zemo is back so the first thing I wrote was secret intentions secret intentions still back of my mind secret intentions oh, it's a lot harder for me to tell now um I feel like I'm getting a much more genuine uh much more genuine vibe from Zemo but this Miss Man is a mastermind um we we as the audience could be very well being played by this man um, I wouldn't fully trust him ever. I wouldn't ever fully trust him. He, but man, he's swooning me. I gotta say, in comparison to New Cap, uh, you know, John Walker, uh, I don't know. Zemo is a charmer in this episode. Um, we're gonna go see Zemo. I always put the uh, tagline, <clears throat> like in the previously on because it gets me so excited um in all the wandavision episodes i did i did very similar um you know the global reparation council it's supposed to be a program to help the blipped get back into society you know like normal people reset restore rebuild yeah, so we get this like, inspiring, in quotes, like propaganda opening. Like <laughs> I'm saying propaganda, but it's like this, like I don't know. It comes off more like a, like I don't know, medication ad uh, for like for this council leading into like a scene with John Walker, Captain America, jumping out of uh, a GRC, uh, you know, Global Repetition Society, a van, <laughs> like like it's a really like a riot van um, in Munich, Germany. Um, and he's uh, entering the warehouse uh, with with his you know with his uh, with his Winter Soldier. I mean, I don't know with his with his Falcon or with his you know sidekick Lamar and a, and a SWAT team um, looking for Carly. This is the facility where they were hiding in last episode, um, I believe. 
where that I, I believe this is the same man who was very excited to have Carly. This, but this man has a very different tone um, with uh, John Walker. <laughs> uh, this man spit in John Walker's face <laughs> it was pretty. It was pretty hilarious. Uh, and then to which John Walker replies, uh, "Do you know who I am?" Yeah, this cap has an ego already. I mean, cap doesn't ever have an ego. Cap doesn't ever have an ego. He's humble. Walker is concerned that Carly is funneling something from someone that he doesn't see. Good, good thinking, good thinking, Walker. Uh, Lamar points out that she's giving people shelter and food, uh, which creates loyalty. Um, you know, he, she's like kind of, you know, pariah. Like Lamar says, they, uh, they tried everything they can, so can't raises. They bet on someone who uh, who has a better hand. Uh, we'll see what that means. This, this camp uh, is always like looking off in the distance, like saying optimistic things, uh, like kind of hoping for the best. Uh, I don't know, man. John Walker is not my Captain America. <laughs> Three episodes in, I stand by it. Um, Bucky and Sam approaches Zemo's cell. We get right into it. We don't waste any time. This isn't. Uh, I'm not throwing shade on one show. I'm not going to put shade on one show on this on this on this podcast. But this isn't a show that wastes time. We are not going to go sit in this cell for half an episode and have a whole um like waste of scenes where these two characters like monologue with each other. Um, there is a great exchange between. Bucky and Zemo. Um, oh, beautiful exchange between the act. I mean, the 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 the, uh, the acting in this scene alone um, is a direct pick up, pick up uh, intention between the two from the Captain America series uh, of Civil War. Um, Bucky does feel he should go on alone because Sam's an Avenger, and at this point, you know how Zemo feels about Avengers. Uh, the scene in which Bucky visits Zemo is reminiscent to me. At this point, of one cleric, I wrote, uh, visits Hannibal Lecter and sounds of the lamps. Uh, I love this. It's such a dark thing. Uh, Zemo does here by trying to activate Bucky by saying longing, rusted, 17 uh, trigger words that used to force him to turn into the, to, to, in, into the Winter Soldier. Um, see, this is what, in the beginning and, and, and ultimately end, you know, gives me the feeling that Zemo is um, cynical, but he could be chaotic good, um, or chaotic neutral. I don't know if we're going off of that chart, the personality chart. Um, Zemo rises out of the shadows, and Bucky claims that those days are over. But Zemo says that he wanted to see how the new Bucky reacted to the old words. Something is still in there. He claims he saying something is still in there, like the Winter Soldier is still in there. And later, we do learn he's right. We do see that. I mean, Bucky still got it. He says, for what it's worth, he's sorry to, to Bucky <laughs> in relation to like taking control of his mind and making the Avengers fall apart at, at his hands. Zemo, uh, you know, his apology does seem sincere to Bucky, if that means anything. I mean, to Bucky or anyone. Um, Zemo seems very surprised that the serum was recreated. Um, so, in my opinion, uh, he didn't have any part in that. Um, you're assuming Hydra has something to do with this, which is why he came to me. Which means you're desperate. Lucky for you. I know where to begin. Um, so, like, next thing we know, Bucky and Sam are talking about breaking Zemo out of jail. Um, so, which is why, what I love. It's exceeding expectations. Um, you know, at the end of the last episode, the only thing you could focus on is them going to talk to Zemo. So, the, for me, the whole next week on Falcon and Winter Soldier, they're going to be just going to talk to Zemo. I'm like, it's going to be a boring, they're going to talk to him episode. This is a short series. They're booming, zooming right through this thing. It's fantastic. <laughs> Sam asks where they are and if he's lost if Bucky's lost his mind and he raises some great points that Zemo is a very dangerous <laughs> let's not forget this and will mess with their minds he, he killed King T'Chaka at this point Sam can tell something has already been done 
and uh, asked Bucky, what what did you do? <laughs> Straight up. Like, cut to this amazing sequence. Like, this sick sequence of, uh, like, it's a cut back to Bucky uh, asking, uh, you know, explaining to Sam. Like, he's asking Zemo, what, what's the book? And he's like, Machiavelli. <laughs> and, like, in the book is, like, this key card. And then, like, it's just <laughs> Bucky. He goes, hypothetically, like, if I broke Zemo out of jail, this is how it happened. And, like, <laughs> it's just all these t- intricate but not so intricate things that they do um and like bucky just basically like i don't know it really it's not that it wasn't that hard bucky literally just drops a note on the table to a guy's i it, okay they could have been arm wrestling or they could have been playing chess i watched the scene like five times but there was so much action happening um basically these two big angry men were doing something at a table and the note said this guy's gonna kill you you do it first and they just started going at it and then zemo just took advantage of the chaos and just started beating this crap out of guards um and then he just made his way out of there and then the next thing you know it um like zemo was there like and uh sam is freaking out um sam is so angry but bucky brings up that sam backed steve um and not signing the accords and he's asking for him to do it again he's like literally bringing him he's bringing that up right away but you know i what what else are they gonna do at this point um, Sam is cornered by this. I mean, literally. Uh, but you know what? Fight fire with fire, Bucky. Uh, fight fire with fire. I, I appreciate the method. You gotta do what you gotta do. Um, this new cap is uh, aggressive. Uh, you don't have money, any options. Um, these super soldiers are intense. It's uh, an intense time. Um, and and uh, the government is really pushy in this world. Uh, in this literal MCU. So... Um, yeah, so, so I totally called that Zemo, <laughs> that Zemo team up. I don't know how obvious it was. Maybe everyone knew it. Maybe everyone wanted it. Um, but yeah, I'm still thinking he's gonna play him. I'm still worried. I'm still thinking he is going to play him. Um, Sam agrees on the team up under the condition that Zemo doesn't make a move without their permission. <clears throat> well. You know, that's a condition that doesn't get uh, listened to at the end of the episode, but it does end up saving their lives. So I don't know if that technically, uh, you know, I don't know how that um, lines up like that. Like he doesn't listen at the end. He wears the mask. He he kicks butt, saves their lives, but he doesn't do it with their permission. He takes the gun. He kills. Like, let's not forget that moment. He did something that may be overlooked, and he killed that man. (laughs) That's a completely overlooked moment. A completely overlooked moment because of what he did to save him. Um, Save them, you know. But, like, he did kill that guy when they, they might not have wanted it to happen. Um, the first stop of this new trio is Zemo's garage. Um, this is the first time we see the mask, and he is non he just not nonchalantly grabs it off the uh, the car seat, and he throws it in a bag. Um, he says he's ended uh, the Winter Soldier program before, and he won't leave his work unfinished. To do this, we'll have to <laughs> we'll have to scale a ladder of low lives. And uh, Sam's like, "Hey, that's nothing we're not uh, used to." First, the first stop, uh, Selby. Uh, from there, we climb. And uh, I don't know. Maybe the pl- only reason he went there was to get the mask. I don't really see why else he went there. Maybe um, that's the, pl- the place they got to the plane. Um, Sam's like, "All this time, you've been rich." Um, it's like I was royalty before your friends dropped, uh, you know, a city on my city or like you know destroy my city uh <laughs> so sad um yet he looks like he's still decking out if he didn't uh go and like become a terrorist he could have still been probably living kind of nice i don't know he didn't have to do that uh the three <laughs> of them are on a plane and like this is where we get a very plane trains and automobiles feel mixed with the uh avengers vibes this is where we're getting some very fun fun experimental character crossover stuff that um i really like i really like this uh <laughs> um so 
we get Zemo and he's opening a book. Uh, it's like, I don't know if he's looking for directions or whatnot. I forget. Sam, uh, yeah, Sam asked him to open it. But it contains Bucky's list of names uh, that he's going to, you know, make right by. A bunch of soldier names. Uh, Zemo asks, who is N- uh, N- uh, Nagima? Uh, I think I said that right. Sorry if I didn't. I understand that that's a list of names that you've wronged as the Winter Soldier. Sam points out um, that it was Steve's actual book. Like what is that? Is am, am I wrong? Is like is that the same book? <laughs> How many pages does that does it have? Is my first question. Uh, my second question is um, like how good of a condition does does one keep a book? Uh, like that, like Bucky and uh, Steve, like they must be very, very. I mean, from from that time period, they must keep paper and products. I, I mine would be all terrible. I would have lost it by now. Um, I mean, tidy, tidy people from that time. Uh, Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes. Sam tells him about Marvin Gaye. You know, he's like, I told Steve about Marvin Gaye. And uh, Zemo was like, it captures the African-American experience. <laughs> and, and and Sam's like, he's out of line, but he's right. Like, oh, my God. This is the funniest thing in the world. I uh, love this. Freaking love this. One of the best scenes uh, I live for this. Uh, Simo points out that the problem with danger and the, the oh, sorry, gets a little more serious. It gets a little more serious in this now. Um, he points out the danger uh, the Captain America and super soldiers is that uh, puts puts them on pedestals, uh, like the country, and then innocent people die. And um, he kind of gets a person, makes it personal, and uh, uh, he says that they're. Uh, you know, Sam, Sam's like, hey, you better stop. You know, they both kind of give him a look. You know, stay in line. Watch it, buddy. Uh, and he says they're going to Madribor. Madribor. Uh, this is a big, glowing city. And uh, Zemo says, we can't just go into this place. It's a very real shady city. Um, you know, we're all going to have to dress the part. on Bucky, you're going to have to be somebody. He said you can't be. Uh, you have to go win a soldier on us. <laughs> um, Sam is very upset with how he has to dress, but when he goes into the city, um, he's like, he has to go very like he says he has to look pretty much like a pimp. And uh, Zemo's like, dude, this is just the look. Look at the picture of the guy. And uh, Sam's like, man, I look just like him. Dang. <laughs> and uh, he he goes with it. And Sam, man, full commitment to character here. Freaking Falcon going all in on the character. I love it. Uh, amazing, amazing. The, the city is beautiful on the outside, um, but this place is a cesspool of evil, apparently. Um, it's like Mos Eisley, I guess, <laughs> um, uh, for for uh, whatever, Flag Smashers, or uh, I mean, the underworld. There's an underworld here. It's, it's very dark. Um, that man at that bar, the Falcon, soon comes to face. Um, yeah, I would not want to sit with him for more than five minutes, and I think I'd probably, um, I would probably need, like, probably five years of therapy. The sequence of the crew driving into the city is mesmerizing and visually stunning. The MCU and their visual effects never, never let me down. Completely immersed and always on the edge of my seat. (laughs) Um, Zemo's up to something. I'm always thinking Zemo's up to something. The look on his face. I mean, always got something up his sleeve, I'm wondering. They go deep into the city, and they finally arrive at a really tough nightclub. This guy's, like, strapped with an AR outside of it, so we know, like, the guy doesn't look super intimidating, uh, but, the, I mean, he has one. Uh, <laughs> um, they, go, they go in there, and uh, Sam walks up to the bar with Zemo, playing the part right of uh you know of this guy smiling tiger and um immediately has to play like it has to be him and the bartender knows his favorite drink and it's like has snake part like cut the snake open it's to, like drink a snake part and it's such a great scene and uh like it's it's funny but then like literally right after this someone walks up to Zemo and they are not like says like hey you're not welcome here and this like escalates so fast I can barely even like tell uh like how like what happens like you could tell like, Zemo's like you could tell the power broker we're here or like the winter soldier and like you could deal with the winter soldier or something like it happens so fast um and pretty much like 
they come at him and um Bucky unleashes on them. Uh, but, but no, no, that's not what happens. This is literally how it goes. Zemo, Zemo unleashes Bucky. Um, he turns on the Winter Soldier, and I think Bucky allows uh, Zemo to activate him, and th- that's kind of insane. Like he becomes all robotic and just starts going full on chaos, full on monster. Um, again, it's freaking unbelievable to watch um and you know the way it's shot it's very like around everyone's shoulder very the way it's shot is very matrixy very well well done well done this show is sick i did not think it'd be and y'all you never want to go and want to expectations too high on anything because you don't never want to be let down but boy oh boy i love this i love this um sam seems super concerned for bucky which is great because um i think sam needed to get to know bucky a little bit after sam uh bucky opened up to sam last week and uh sam kind of shut him down right in therapy uh very rudely very kind of heartlessly in my opinion think about that all week Um, hurts 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 um yeah so that kind of gains them right to pass it's like the 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 bartender's like yeah the uh she'll see you now um so we will see you now so in slow motion to like this really sweet italian music uh zemo sam and bucky make their way to selby this lady just very interesting very short-lived very short-lived um so Zemo claims, like, for this information on where to find this person who created the super serum, right? Get info that he'll give her Bucky, this winter soldier, like, his commands is him. Because she's a saw him in action. She knows what he can do. Um, she'll give him him. And uh, she just immediately gets, says, the serum's in the city. Wilfred Nagel. Nagel. Nagel is the name of the man who made it. Um, that's immediately like maybe they knew that's all they needed but um she they did want more he started asking more questions but like no that's not all you're gonna you're gonna need to give me more you're gonna need to give me more than that like that's not all you know uh, she's like trying to play hardball with him but at that, that moment sam gets a phone call from his sister it's just the worst timing and everyone gets really concerned um it's just bad and it wasn't even like a, a phone ring it's very realistic it was just a very loud vibrate we all can relate to this like people can hear your vibrate sometimes um totally get that sam um that sucks <laughs> he does everything he can to stay in character he does such a good job uh, but his sister calls him sam at the end and literally um oh my gosh like selby flips uh, she says kill them and from outside sharon carter we find out to be like pop shelby in the head immediately or maybe it wasn't her i don't know i mean was it zemo or one of them that's what i find most confusing i went back and rewound it a couple times i couldn't quite tell who it was that shot uh selby i I think it must have been one of the two uh um bucky or sam i but i thought it was I don't know somebody from the, I'm I'm a little confused on that. Uh, I'll have to maybe look online and come back in next week on that one. But uh, either way, Selby dies. <laughs> um, very very things go very intense very fast. Um, so a notification goes out and then there's a bounty out for the killer, uh, which might as well have been them. If it wasn't them, it might as well have been them. Um, so as the three are escaping, they get shot at by multiple groups of attackers. Like everyone starts coming at them. Even like the people in the windows of the buildings are like like finger gunning them. Like you're gonna die. <laughs> oh my god! But you know this is freaking exciting. Um, Zemo, Sam, and Bucky just start gunning it all of a sudden this is sharon carter's entrance um she's disheveled i really like her performance here i really like what they're doing with the character um i feel like they're giving her so much more definition uh and i'm i'm digging it uh i'm i'm a little concerned for her well-being (laughs) 
Uh, Sam tries to explain the situation with Zemo, but she's very upset at the sight of them being together. Um, a lot of people, it's going to be very hard to explain it to them. Um, she allows them to go to, the, to her safe house. Um, that is very nice of her. Very nice of her. Very nice safe house. Really nice place. Um, Sam's like mesmerized by the art there. <laughs> Um, Sharon and Sam have an agreement that if she helps them out, he will do everything he can, everything he can to get her name cleared. And he wants to do this. Um, you can tell throughout the episode, um, Sam really, really wants to help Sharon. He has like this guilt, um, for people affected by the shield, um, you know what I really like about this? Uh, Sam is taking the mantle of Captain America, <laughs> guys. Sam is taking the weight. He's taking the responsibility. He's taking the guilt of the shield. He's taking... And, 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 oh, good gracious. The man is, is feeling... He's feeling the pain, and uh, he actually knows what it's like to be the soldier. Um, Steve Rogers picked the right Captain America. Oh, good God, I'm feeling it. Um, he didn't choose the wrong. He did not choose the wrong Captain America, and Steve knew it. Um, I'm starting to see it. Um, he's starting to see the people he needs to write, to do right by, and uh, he's going to need to get that shield back to do it. Um, I'm starting to see that now myself as a, as an audience member. Um, that's beautiful. The crew, uh, the crew, uh, they get, they get like, they're waiting in a club, I guess, while they're waiting to get the location, like from Sharon to, to, to get to Dr. Uh, Nagel, Nagel. Um, they're get they're, uh, we get a very quick glimpse, which can be gift of Zemo fist bumps and bumping in the club. Very great. What a, what a great episode. Uh, did anyone not expect this much Zemo, uh, and like, collaboration did 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 you guys think this i did not think zemo was going to be such a partner in crime i'm freaking i honestly love it i love the bromances i love the team ups even if zemo goes bad again which he most likely will because i think he's evil at heart um i don't know maybe he'll be full on good maybe he'll just take on a full good mantle i don't know i'm freaking all aboard i like change i love this story so far um this is different um, Sam opens up the door to the shipping container and it finds it empty at first. And for a split second, I'm very concerned that Sharon is going to like lock them in there and ship them all off somewhere. Um, and I think for maybe a minute that maybe the show wants you to think that too. And at the end of the episode, we get like maybe a little hint that Sharon's up to something that we don't know about too. Like she, she goes up to somebody and she says like, um, something's wrong. Um, you know, but We'll see. I don't want to fully throw her to the wolves. Um, I want to give her benefit of the doubt, but I don't know. I can't trust anyone. <laughs> oh, there's so many twists. Uh, there's got to be great twists in every show, and uh, this one's only got three left out of this. Um, but there ends up being a secret lab underneath this uh, container in the shipping yard. There's a doctor living down there. Oh, it's Dr. Nagel. What's the deal with this dude? He's got a very Mark Zuckerberg attitude. This guy, Bucky, just doesn't waste any time. He starts interrogating him. Um, he goes, uh, he gets like right in on his face. Uh, but like outside, Sharon starts getting in these big fights with these bounty hunters. Um, um, so basic information we get right off this guy. Um, Bucky starts interrogating him. So he finds out, we find out when Hydra fell, uh, he was working for Hydra. When Hydra fell, Nagel was recruited by the CIA. Um, he had a sample of the serum that he fully optimized and like perfected to his what he wanted it to be. Um, he calls himself a god. What a cocky freaking human being. I mean, when people are messing with DNA like that and they're making hum pretty much gods themselves, I guess they just gotta consider himself a god. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. Uh, you never call yourself a god. He was snapped when he came. Uh, he was snapped. So this is like Sam was like, well, why didn't we hear about this? Sam was also snapped. Um, so you were going to be dealing with this uh, in about the same amount of time regardless. <laughs> um, but he was snapped when he came back. The power broker funded him. 
Uh, so this is like this is that the time. Uh, that's how that worked. Still, still no telling if Zemo was snapped. Um, did I miss that answer? Maybe I did. Maybe I, I got to rewatch. I don't think that was told to me. Uh, maybe I'm. F- maybe I missed it. It turns out there were uh, twenty vials made of this new serum, and they're all going out. In Captain America: Civil War, there wasn't one extra super soldier made. There's all these super soldiers now. Uh, Carly stole all of them. This is crazy. <laughs> Uh, while this combo, all this combo is happening, Zemo uh, steals a gun from a desk. Um, still outside, Sharon is kicking massive ass, <laughs> just all over the place, up and down the block, like, like you've never seen. Um, Bucky asks if there's any serum in the lab. He's really curious. Uh, Zemo shoots him blind, dead, just blind. That's that moment I'm talking about. Um, like, literally. Like, you, did you have to do that? Then, like, this rocket guy comes in and gets this quad kill. <laughs> uh, blows the whole lab is destroyed. The whole lab is destroyed. Um, I don't know if the doctor would have been killed by that, but do you think that uh, Zemo should have killed the guy? You know, was that uh, was that bad? It, it was It was vengeful. It was vengeful. It's just Zemo, how he is, man. It's very, like, a very Punisher move, I guess. Um, is that what they're doing? Are they, making, are they making him an anti-hero? Is he more of a villain more of an anti-hero or is he gonna get his own show sick either way it's sick um so sam and bucky uh and sharon they uh they trade gunfires they escape the haze right and uh sam and bucky argue they're arguing, they're arguing action movie tropes because they're pretty much suck they're stuck they're ne- they don't suck they don't suck they, they're stuck and uh, Zemo is, is he puts on his mask he dons the mask and uh, he sees some henchmen down below and he shoots henchmen <laughs> I mean I'm calling the superhero movie like names they're uh, you know they're bounty hunters he shoots a pipe causing a huge explosion uh, helping uh, Sharon Bucky and Sam to escape dang that was super sick uh he looks at them gives them the nod of approval you think you think that zemo's running away zemo how many chances did zemo have to just like slip away and never come back from from jail you know what i mean this is his mission to just get these soldiers i mean think about that though he could have just slipped away slipped away slipped away with the gun left 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 i mean zemo wanted to kill himself at the end of uh civil war he had nothing to live for so he really wants this done um, it's very, oh God, commendable and so dang likable. It's, it's it makes me sick. <laughs> um, man, what a dang good episode! I'm cruising through these notes. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I watched this one a little later. Uh, time got away from me tonight, but uh, I'm I'm doing it in one take. Uh, clearly, 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 this show pumps adrenaline into its audience and it's making me and marvel maniac uh living up to the title um <laughs> living up to the title of the show of the podcast <laughs> if you are not leaving uh comments i mean like what are they called comments or ratings or whatever it is on the, whatever app you're listening to it goes a really long way. It doesn't add the algorithm or whatever thing gets us on your page. It helps. It does help. Um, put a rating on us. Uh, it would go a very long way. That's my little mid mid to ending uh, advertisement I'm giving you guys today. Um, we're close to the end here. I'm gonna keep. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna finish this up because we have a few few more uh, a few more dots here. So everyone escapes in Zemo's car. Like Zemo is amazing. I don't. I don't know how else to express it. I mean, he's no, John Walker is the bad guy. Captain America is the bad guy. Zemo's a good guy. Uh, up to this point, there's nothing else telling me otherwise. Um, we are back with Carly in Lithuania. She's talking to her fellow Flag Smasher about how she thought she'd once be a teacher. Um, no more is that. But uh, he's giving her hope that maybe that could happen um, later. Uh, yeah, he's probably thinking that's probably not going to happen for uh, after he sees her blow up that building. She thinks <laughs> she thinks the power broker will come begging for the rest the rest of the serum. Um, back at the prison in Berlin, John, uh, Captain America, current Captain America, and Lamar are investigating Zemo's breakout. Um, 
about a day and a day later. Uh, John says he wants to get the job done in his way. Kind of like he was saying earlier. So I guess John's got something up his sleeve. We'll see what happens next week. What's he going to do with his shield? Uh, and Lamar, he wants to just ask Lamar to go with it. Just wants Lamar to go with it. Lamar seems skeptical. He does. Um, back on the plane, Sam expresses guilt. This is what I'm saying. Guilt about Sharon. Guilt about Isaiah. Guilt about the shield. Think about he should destroy it. He, he's like, he's taking the mantle of Captain America. is guilty about it. And this is why he's going to put it on his back and almost bear it. In a sense, I'm feeling. Um, he's going to bear the shield. Uh, wonders how many people uh, got hurt because of it. Maybe he should have destroyed it again. Bucky says he, he, uh... He'll, he'll steal the shield and take it himself. Again, he said that. Uh, Zemo brings them food. Am I horrible for trusting Zemo or just wanting to? <laughs> um, we cut again to the Flag Smashers with Carly um, raiding this uh, big supply place. I don't know if it's like a military place. It's very official. Um, explodes. Explodes the whole place. Um, a bomb goes off. And her friend's very upset because there's people still inside. Um... But she says it's necessary. Um, I don't... Okay. She's a terrorist. She's a terrorist. Super soldier terrorist. Um, she's way too into her... Way too into whatever she think is right, thinks is right. Completely wrong. Completely out of it. You are insane. <laughs> um, Zemo is taking Sam and Bucky to the next location. Her Bucky notices uh, these vibranium beads on the ground. Um, so Bucky, uh, like he proceeds to follow them, and um, you know Sam and Zemo go in. And so Bucky definitely like sees these things, and I mean I listen to the audio description, so I know they're vibranium beads. They're like audio listening devices or something. I don't know if they're audio listening, but they're vibranium is what he notices. And we see Io from Black Panther. There she is. That uh, she is of the guard. Of uh, from Black Panther, I don't know enough about her to say too much about her, um, but, but it's exciting. We have a Wakanda crossover. Um, we're going to be getting um, some Wakanda vengeance, and you know, to see that we're going to leave it off there and to have a whole other long episode involving a Wakanda thing uh, next week, dude. Where is this show going? Um, I have to keep this one a little shorter than usual, but I hope I got it all in for you and covered all the ground. Um, and like <laughs> express the excitement I have about this show. This is Marvel Maniac, um, an MCU freaking after show. Um, I wanted to just tell you how grateful I am for having you here. Um, are you for, are you excited like for the future of the MCU? Like I am. This is my squeaky chair. Um, I'm getting like more um, equipment as we go here. <laughs> Less squeaky chairs, more stuff. If you like to donate to the show, currently the best place to do that is at Mr. Honest Podcast on PayPal, Mr. Honest Podcast at gmail.com. That's the PayPal link. Um, it does go back into the show, equipment and all that stuff. Um, no pandering, and please don't feel obligated to do it. Um, I just lay that there uh, because I love what I do, and I put all my heart into it as often as I can. Um, that's literally it. Um, Mar Marvel Maniac Pod at gmail.com for all your theories. Throw them at me. Um, we're at Marvel Maniac Pod on Twitter. I'm at Eric Cicada on Twitter. E R I C S E Q S E Q U E I R A. Butcher my own last name here. Um, I literally am so thankful to each and every one of you who have hit that subscribe. I don't think I've ever said it like that uh, so intensely. Um, and left uh, left a comment or anything like that. Just listening, just listening. You're amazing. And until next week for that fourth episode already of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Where is this show going? I have no idea, but I can't be more thrilled to be along for the ride with you. I'll be here every single Friday, whether I'm releasing them at 7 a.m. or uh, you know 5 p.m. because the episode is that insane and I'm still processing it. <laughs> you have a wonderful week, and until next time, Avengers disassemble.